Hey guys, welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks. Today is moving day, or actually I'd say the next two weeks are moving day. Today is moving day, or actually I'd say the next two weeks are moving day. Um, I want to show you guys how I move a shop, but it's going to be a lot of editing, a lot of work, and moving a shop to me is very dangerous, so I don't, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but what I am going to do is invite you to come over to Instagram or Facebook and follow me there. I'm going to try to be posting often there, and when I'm all done, what I plan to do is edit it and put it together for the channel. But for you guys that can't wait to see how I move all this stuff, you'll be able to follow me on those two sources. So let's first talk about the trailer. These trailers are really cool because they're very affordable to rent. This one here is a four by six and it's gonna cost me $130 for the week, $150 with tax or whatever. And what makes it great is it actually lowers down. So now with a pallet jack and a series of pallets, I can just easily load this thing up and be rocking. But let's go in, let's do the last official shop tour. I've already started to move some of the stuff. In this corner here, as you recall, was where the welders were, the plasma cutter. Actually, let's do this. Let's just stay down one side and go around. Back here is a uh, spot welder, vacuum table, or not a vacuum table, a downdraft table for welding. We've got one welder still here, the Palcon, which I really, really like. Back there is a, I think it's 18 or 20 inch bandsaw. Here's the milling machine that I'm gonna be scraping in. I'm gonna be working on that next month. That'll be a great video series. Um, down here, different cabinets. Now, my goal here is I've gotta fit most of this stuff in an 800 square foot basement. This shop here is 1,500 square feet, so I'm selling off some equipment. Some of it actually is gonna go upstairs in the double car garage, uh, but yes, my wife is still gonna to get to park her car there. That is the goal, so I just wanna let you guys know that. But some of the stuff will go upstairs. This cabinet here is gonna go upstairs. It's usually full of woodworking tools. We'll go back to the grinding room. Oh, this here was just a rack pallet rack, um, that table saw is going to be sold. Um, yeah, there's just some various stuff that I didn't use very often but was able to get to when I needed to. Back here, of course, is the grinding room. We've got, let's see, we'll start up here, actually. Up here we have different tooling. Down here we have a small KO Lee cut, tool cutter grinder, the large KO Lee. This cabinet here is set up for mostly, well, both of these machines. So I'm pretty well tooled up. The surface grinder, um, I can't remember which one this is, but you guys, I'll tell you in the description or something. Down here is one of my favorite things is where I put all my cutters in the side cabinet. Different um, polishers or buffers, grinders, drill sharpeners, that kind of stuff. I've talked about this bandsaw before. It's the Delta 14 inch. And it's the metal wood cutting saw, so it has a transmission in it to gear it down for metal working. Uh, I've never talked about this drill press, and it's a Rockwell drill press. I actually call it my Frankenstein drill press because originally it was set up 
on a table. Somebody had built a base for it and actually did a really nice job. And then, of course, I had to take it to the next level is I put a magnetic chuck on the table. So it's great to put a vise on. The magnetic chuck holds that into place. But up here, you can't see it. Well, actually, let me see if I can get you under here. I'm going to let's see if you can see the motor. I put a motor on there from a treadmill. And it's a DC motor. Well, let's just say I'm going back to an AC motor. These motors that works, this is probably the fifth motor I've put in there. They worked for about, the first one lasted about six months. This one here lasted about two weeks, so they're really not an industrial motor. Over here we have the different tool cabinets, you know, nuts and bolts, screws, nuts, bolts. Um, up here I have some kind of woodworking stuff. Now here was where all my metrology stuff used to be. But as you know now, if you've watched the video, I've got that thing. Very cool. You know, more stuff. Let's see, what's interesting here? Let's look at drill bits. More drill bits. That's not all the drill bits. Uh, we got a little Harding lathe here. Now, the shop is, of course, a big mess right now because of the moving. I haven't been keeping things cleaned. Everything's just getting moved out. This is a Harding. It's an older split bed lathe. And it has a, a turret on it, and that's what it is. It's a turret lathe or secondary lathe. Great machine. I don't use it enough. I need to sell it off. So that's going to be going up for sale. So if you're interested, give me a call. Um, back here is my storage room. I've got more drill bits in here. I've got some welding stuff. I've got paint supplies. i got a little bit of everything in here. And I'm always surprised by no matter how much stuff I have, I still have room. Back here is, or now we're back into the main shop. We have a Harding JHLV. Uh, I'm going to be selling that off. Uh, I hate to sell it off, but I just am not going to get around to repairing it. The whole thing has to be completely rebuilt. The bed has to be reground. Um, it's killing me to sell it, but at the end of the day, I just don't have a place for it, and I don't have the time to get up and running. In here is stuff for the milling machine, different cutters. Um, just different things. Everything in this cabinet is for the milling machine. As you can see, the Enco, we're going to be keeping that around a little bit longer until I scrape in the other machine. Then this one's going to go up for sale. We have the Enco lathe. And I gotta say, I'm really enjoying this lathe. I'm gonna put it down in the basement with me. I used to hate this lathe, and well, maybe I become a better craftsman and can enjoy um, its idiosyncrasies, if that's a nice way to say it. And it also has a series of drawers where almost everything in these drawers is dedicated to this lathe. There's a few extra things in there that isn't dedicated to the lathe, but you know, that's all right. This is the interesting one. The closing is going to go upstairs. I'm probably not going to plug it in. I will level it because I think a lathe should always be leveled. Um, I just can't get it in the basement. I can, but I just don't feel I can do it safely, so I'm not going to. And of course, here is the metrology center. Um, I haven't shown anything in the drawers yet. So uh, these are all mics. And these, well, I'm going to save that for another video. I think you guys will enjoy that. Oh, here was something fun. My uh, MakerBot 3D printer. I did a whole video on that, and the video audio was bad, so I never showed you the video. Sorry, someday I'll actually do on starting one of those. Back here is the cabinet just for the closing. Just some fun stuff. I really like this. I like how it's all set up on a rack. 
This is all J2 collets. Um, always looking for J2 collets. Um, they're not super rare, but they, you know, I'm not finding a lot of them. I mean, I want, I'm looking for the 64th and the 30 seconds now for that one. It'd be really fun to get a full collection going. Um, here is the plasma table. If you follow me on Facebook, you'll know a little bit about this. I picked it up, uh, negotiated a deal on it, showed up, and it was so old, it's, well, let's just say we had a hard time, we had a hard time finding a computer that would run it, and then we had to find the software. It's still under experimentation, 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 but we are getting it to uh, actually draw a line that is predictable. Very important. Back here is the homemade bead roller. Here is a hydraulic press. Um, actually, both these share parts from the same machine. There was a, one of those stair machines that you mount it to the wall and you sit on a seat and it takes you up the stairs, so it's something for an older folk. But those parts kind of are shared between those machines. So, you know, I'm always scrapping something and reutilizing it. 18-inch uh, disc sander, as you guys have seen. Here's one of my favorite things. I'm really enjoying that vise on a post. It also has all of its own hardware with, or I should say tools with it. It has hammers and chisels and I should say cold chisels, um, hacksaws, things like that, things I use with it quite often. Back there you guys have seen and that finger brake, but actually it's a finger brake right now. It's just a normal brake, no fingers with it. The Kalamazoo bandsaw which I gotta say, I've really enjoyed it. Works so well. Back here is a tool that I've never even talked about. Never, I've hardly ever used it. It's a bending device uh, for smaller diameter materials. Very similar to a Haas bender, just a smaller version. You guys have probably seen this forge in a video. Um, back here is a cold saw. We're gonna be doing some work with that really soon. I think you guys will really like. So here is the last video of the shop. Now, if you want to see it getting moved and the processes of moving all this machinery around, follow me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, and you'll get to see it. And hopefully someday I'll get it all edited together. But I hope to give you guys some great helpful hints of what goes on to move this entire shop. All right, guys, till next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks.